The third standing pole posture that we did was the bladed palm press. So hands facing downwards and edge of the hand facing forwards, pulling out to the side with screwing force, but holding it frozen in stillness. The visualization that we used was of a rope holding the arms together that we were pulling against, and then another rope tied from the middle of that down to our feet. Um, we want to do something similar with the visualization, only we'll change it slightly to a thick rubber band between the wrists and then also another rubber band that goes from each wrist down to each foot. And those two vectors of resistance will allow us to have a little bit of an arc in our movement. So we'll be pulling our hands out to the side and then slightly up as if they're in a kind of semicircular motion. And then going the other way, just imagine that there's similar rubber bands, but they're on the outside. So they're pulling the arms from the outside and they're pulling the arms from the top. So we've got to push down and in against them. And again, creating this compound semicircular motion. And this creates a slightly more complex intentional arc because the arc itself is being skewed as we lift or bring the arms together. And there's a little bit of an unusual dimension here because just as when we did the standing pole posture itself, there's a sense of screwing force in that we're twisting the arms forwards. That's what makes this posture a little bit more difficult to do. But this time, as we move the arms outwards, that doesn't change at all. So that feeling remains frozen in the arms just as it did when we were doing the standing pole posture. So our arms are twisted forwards and that doesn't twist back, so we're not twisting our arms. We could do, but we're not for this posture. So we maintain that frozen motion, even though we're shifting our arms outwards and inwards in a slow movement. So that's a little bit of an extra dimension to think about and the complexity of the structure of intent that you can have certain parts of the body still frozen in that same feeling that they had in the standing pole position, but nevertheless, the wider limb is moving. And again, we want to keep our focus on the upper body for this first exercise. So just keeping that intentional arc around the upper body, the shoulders, the front and the back of the torso and the arms. And again, as you move the arms out, you should feel the intentional arc around your back and around the back of your arms. And using this visualization, changing the visualization so that there's resistance to moving in, you should then feel the intentional arc shift to the inside of your arms and across your chest. If you like, you can try keeping the same visualization for both movements and seeing how the intentional arc remains in the same place for both movements. But first try changing the visualization so that you get the right feeling. We're going to do eight again, so let's crack on and give it a go.
Next, I demonstrate how to skew the posture with dynamic weightedness. So this is how you would do it in a more advanced fashion. Although if you watch that first section quite carefully, you can see that at points I forget that I'm supposed to be keeping it in balance. And this is exactly what I was saying at the beginning that for a more advanced practitioner, you very rarely work with a completely balanced movement. So it feels a little bit odd. Therefore, it's always good to revisit it. But it always feels good to do it in the advanced way shifting left and right combining open close rise and sink sometimes in small imperceptible movements but nevertheless dynamically shifting the structure the skew and the stack of your posture also note that this is where you can start to just unwind the frozen screwing force in your forearms a little bit so you can begin to play with it a little bit more so unfreeze that frozen movement that was held within stillness and then held within wider movement so it starts becoming layers within layers but you can add in that little bit of shifting the screwing force back and forth in line with the movement Next, we want to begin adding in interlinking our upper body movements with our lower body. And we'll keep this very simple because it will feed into the next exercise a lot more easily. So all we want to do is start to feel the leverage point at the quad. So we're returning to balanced whole body unified movement. We don't want to skew it, but we want to have the perception that we're using the quad to leverage the upper body against the lower body. And all we want to do is feel like when we're moving our arms closer together, we're pressing down into the ground with our legs. So we want to engage all of our legs. And this is a much more experiential rather than descriptive exercise. So it will make more sense as you feel it. But feel like the whole of your leg, both legs are pushing down into the ground in a completely balanced fashion. And then the reverse, when you're moving your hands apart, feel like you want to lift off the ground. You want to lift your legs up as if they could leave the floor, as if you were freezing a jump in a moment, but it's not actually moving the leg. You're not bending at the core. You're not bending at the waist. You just want to create this feeling through your intent. So notice that one of the things that we're doing with these exercises is combining stillness with movement, not just stillness within movement or movement within stillness. We have parts of our body where the force is completely still, but it's created by intent. It's generated by intent. It's just triggering the parts of the body that would move if we were going to move. In this case, the legs, yet other parts of the body, our arms, are moving so it's combining movement and stillness together again ponder this or it's worth pondering it think about how for quite a long time when we've been talking about each one the information that we've been getting from some sources has been talking about intent as if it was a singular thing and that leads us into thinking of it as some kind of exotic force. Now we can see that the programming is a complex thing that has a structure of its own. It's doing multiple different things at the same time. It has a structure that completely mirrors what's going on in the physical body. And combined together, we want to eliminate the sense of these two things being different. And we call that the intentional body. So there's a liminal interconnection between the programming in the mind and the physical feeling in the body. They're separate things, but they become one thing, the doctrine of the mean, the intentional body. And that's the mechanism that we use to either restructure our intent through the physical movement, or alternatively to use intent to structure physical movements. And usually we do the latter. We're trained to do the latter, or society forms our intent to structure our movement in a certain way. This is Wang Shengjai's argument, his direct argument. 
in each one we start switching that around we start using the physical body as a means to access and restructure intent and along the way we begin to link those two things together dust off the link between the two and begin to see that they're actually elements of the same thing and we call that the intentional body so let's give that a go holding all of those things in mind literally and expressing them physically finding the intentional body in our movement that happens step by step but let's give it a go again we're going to do eight times and just try to follow the instructions this is one that you've really got to learn and experience directly well they all are but this one the explanation will make more sense as you try and get the feeling Next, we do something that's a little bit more challenging. And again, all of these exercises are designed to build, to show us how much work you can actually do within stillness or within slow movement. So in this case, again, we return to a completely balanced posture, but we're going to introduce a feeling as if we are opening to one side and then the other. That is as if we are turning around our spine or vertical axis. And in the video that's playing now, I'm demonstrating what this would feel like if you actually did it, if you actually went with the movement. But what we want to do is take this posture and contain it within the same basic posture that we've been practicing all along. So I hope that one of the things that people are getting now is when we say things like movement within stillness, this is on a completely different level. So 
we are moving our arms are moving but nevertheless there's another movement contained within that movement that's frozen within that movement and that's the intention creating this sense or activating this intentional arc actually it's quite a sophisticated intentional arc that's moving more into spiral force where we're twisting left and then we're twisting right so we're emphasizing and our visualization for that is that there's a rubber band going from let's say our left wrist to our right leg and we're pulling against it and then it pulls us back in and then we switch to the right hand there's a rubber band from the right wrist down to the left leg and we pull against it and then it pulls us back into place but we don't actually turn round our spine axis we just create the sense that that spiral is there with our intent and we keep it frozen within the same balanced posture that's actually quite difficult to do and just noticing yourself are you actually turning around your vertical axis or are you managing to stay completely balanced otherwise in your upper body and your quad if you film yourself you'll probably find that you are starting to turn a little bit or you might even notice yourself doing that that's how powerful the instructions from the intent are it's hard to overrule them and it's hard to keep in mind that we want to create this structure of intent within a physical form without fully expressing it. But that's exactly the skill that we need to develop if we want to use Farley to generate force but then within that movement use our intent to fire up an intentional arc that's just going to, and I mean physically, it physically creates the intentional arc by just knitting together that alignment that will best allow us to transmit force to a particular contact point and it's through this kind of training that we develop that ability so we take our intent or our ability to manipulate and control the structure of our intent onto an entirely different level again we're going to do eight times so follow along or do it in your own time but let's crack on and have a go